subtract the weight of the wheelchair from the total weight of the resident and wheelchair. Next procedure, assisting the resident to move to the head of the bed. What position should the bed be in when moving a resident to the head of the bed? Supine position. And what is done to protect their head during this procedure? We place a pillow up against the headboard. So the pillow up against the headboard to protect their head. Neck procedure, supine position. What is supine position? Lying flat on your back with the legs slightly apart. How can, what, how can this increase comfort to the resident in this position? So what can we do to add more comfort? Supply supportive padding if necessary. So we can put padding everywhere, under their arms, under their legs, we can put the small of their back, we can float their heels. But one place you never put padding is underneath their knees. It could restrict blood flow. Next procedure, lateral position. How many pillows are needed for lateral position? Three pillows. And where are those pillows placed? for lateral position, behind the back to help maintain position, between the knees and ankles to prevent the bony areas, and then under the top arm to prevent the friction area. Next procedure, Fowler's position. What is Fowler's position? Elevating the head of the bed 45 to 60 degrees. What are some procedures this is used for? Grooming, so combing hair, shaving, oral care, and eating. Next, semi Fowler's position. What is semi Fowler's position? Elevating the head of the bed. 30 to 45 degrees. And what is semi Fowler's position used for? A resident with a feeding tube. Make sure the head stays up at least 30 degrees. So what do you need to do with your resident after each position change? Check body alignment. Next procedure, sit on edge of bed. What position should the bed be in to begin this procedure? The bed needs to be in the lowest position. The head needs to be elevated. Describe your hand placement for this procedure. Put your hands under their shoulder blades, both and your arms under their thighs, both. So under the shoulder blades and under the thighs. How does the resident know when to move? We always move on the count of three. That way everybody knows when to go and if somebody's not ready, they can say stop or wait. So always on the count of three. After sitting the resident up on the edge of the bed, what are some questions we need to ask them? Are you dizzy? Do you feel okay? Because of orthostatic hypotension. That's when the blood pressure drops, when they suddenly rise up. So always ask them, are you dizzy? Do you feel okay? And what is done after checking the resident for dizziness? Make sure their shoes are on and their feet are flat on the floor. Shoes or slippers, depending on the resident's needs. But you want the shoes on before the feet hit the floor. Next procedure, transfer to chair. When transferring a resident to a chair, 
Where is the chair placed and how? The chair is placed on the strong, unaffected side and it is touching the bed frame. Describe your hand placement for this procedure. Your hands are going to grab the gate belt on the sides of the resident. Describe your feet placement when transferring the resident. Your feet should be in front of the resident, toe to toe. Where does the resident put their hand during this transfer? On your upper arm, never around your neck. And when you're turning the resident to the chair or wheelchair, how far apart should your feet be? 18 inches or shoulder width apart. Next, transfer to wheelchair. Now you get them up the exact same way as you do transfer to chair. But with wheelchair, we have to know how to go through open and closed doors. So when you're transferring a resident through an open door, what direction do you go? You check for traffic and the resident goes first. So you go forward through an open door. How do you transfer a wheelchair through a closed door? Open the door, check for traffic, and you go first. So we go backwards through a closed door. And what do you need to do to the wheelchair when you reach their destination for safety? Lock the wheelchair. Next procedure, walking. Where does a CNA stand when walking a resident? To the side and slightly behind. And at what pace is a resident walked? At their own pace. Where should your arm be when walking a resident? On their back. So if there's no gate belt, you just want to keep one hand on the resident's back when walking. Next procedure, assisting with a walker. When assisting with a walker, how does the caregiver break the walker? Place one foot in front of the walker and place one hand on top of the walker. Where does the resident put their hand on the walker? They grab the grips of the handles. Which leg does the resident move first? The affected or the unaffected? The affected leg moves first. And how far ahead should the resident move the walker? Six to ten inches. Ambulation with a gate belt. Where are your hands when using a gate belt to assist with ambulation? On the side and on the back. So you hold it at the side and back because you're going to be standing on the resident side. And how fast do you walk? At the resident's pace. Next, assisting with a cane. When should the resident be instructed on how to and when to use the cane? When you get them up from the bed. When walking with a cane, describe how the resident moves the cane and leg. The cane moves first, four to six inches. The affected leg goes even with the cane and the unaffected leg goes forward and beyond the weak leg and cane. Next procedure, transfer to stretcher or shower bed. In order to transfer a resident to a stretcher or shower bed, what position is the bed and stretcher bed and shower bed put at? So what position are they in? 
supine position. And what must the caregiver do to ensure safety during the transfer? Make sure the bed and stretcher at the same height. Lock the wheels. Next, transfer two-person lift. For a two-person lift to be used in an emergency, for example, like if they had a stroke, where do the caregivers place their arms? Around the resident's back and under the resident's thighs. Next procedure, shower shampoo. After turning on the water for the shower, what should be done next? You check the temperature, then have them check for comfort if they're able. When assisting the resident to pat dry after the shower, what areas need to be dried adequately? Breasts, underarms, perineal area, and between the toes. Very important anywhere where skin is touching skin. Next procedure, bed bath, perineal care. List the body parts that you're washing during the bed bath in order. Eyes, face, neck, ears, behind the ears. Farthest arm, Closest arm, chest. Farthest leg, closest leg. Perineal care. Neck, back, and buttocks. If a resident has a catheter, what is checked for before providing perineal care? Leaks, secretions, or irritations. So if there's resin, or there's anything coming out of the catheter, like mucusy or discoloration, something like that, report to the nurse. How far down is the catheter clean? Approximately four inches. Explain how to perform perineal care to a female. Separate the labia, wipe the urethral area first, which is down the middle, wipe in downward strokes, working outward to the thighs, inside and outside the labia. For the male,